Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing yet another edition of the bi-weekly wishlist or washout. If you're new to my channel, or if you've not seen the series before, what I do is every other Wednesday, not every Wednesday, every other Wednesday, go through all the new makeup releases that I see on Instagram, and I decide if I'm going to be adding anything to my wishlist, or if everything is a total washout. The look that I'm currently wearing today, with the exception of the lipstick, I actually am going to be posting the next couple of weeks. I did a full face with my Natasha Denona... I did a full face with my Natasha Denona Sunset Palette and I filmed the entire thing. It'll be up in just a little bit. And then just for this video, I threw on this nice Fenty lipstick. This is the Fenty Lip Stunna in the shade Unattached. Very, very pretty, very summer, very orange and coral. So we literally have so much to talk about today. There's, <laughs> oh, this might be a long video, but just pulling up trend mood, there, there's a lot, there's a lot. So just get a snack, get a drink, get comfy and let's go. So first, uh, I think I mentioned my opinion a while ago about like makeup brands that try to do skincare. I'm not a huge fan. Like if you do makeup, just do makeup. If you do skincare, if you start out as doing skincare, then just stick to skincare. Because I feel like for the most part, whenever makeup companies switch into doing skincare, it's obviously a money grab. It's not them actually wanting to do more skincare. It's just a money grab, you know? And honestly, quite honestly, the best skincare I've ever found has been really affordable. The Ordinary, um, CeraVe, you know, like really, really good, dependable, affordable companies have like some of the best skincare. So I always just always, always give like a second glance to expensive companies that try to come out with more skincare. So Too Faced. Too Faced is trying to come out with more skincare than they already did. So they're coming out with a luxury face plumping primer serum. They're just throwing too many words into one sentence there. That's some BS that I'm never going to be trying. And they're also coming out with some lip injection maximum plump extra strength limp plump lip plumpers yeah no that that's gonna be a no from me and they come in so many different like okay i have to give them i guess props if i have to for the amount of shades they're coming out with but like i don't think this is necessary <laughs> yeah so I will not be trying any of these products, and uh, I will say that across the board, if there are any other makeup brands that are trying to come out with more skincare, they're not for me. All right, so this, so I'm actually filming this on Sunday the 12th, and as I'm filming this, all the drama that's happening with this release is happening right now. This is the Raw Beauty Christie collab with Pure Cosmetics, and honestly, I looked at the palette and I saw that it's like a double-sided palette with neutrals and colors. I want this palette, but I knew I was not going to get this palette on launch day. You know, like it's, it's, she's got a lot of followers. Like I think she just hit a million. I was not going to get this on release day. So I didn't even try. I was going to wait until another, you know, release, but I'm on Twitter and like apparently the entire website crashed and it's been hours. I'm filming this at like 5 PM EST. So this released, I think at noon and people still cannot check out on the pure website. Like it legitimately like crashed. So while I'm happy that this went so well, went so well, like so many people were interested for Christie, it's not a great look for Pure, quite honestly. So either they underestimated what they were going to get with this, or or they underestimated it and they didn't care. Like that's honestly that that's the only really option here. So. I, I am kind of sad because I feel like now Christie's going to deal with this backlash that, you know, nobody could really check out. I'm still, like, checking on Instagram right now. And, like, I don't know if anyone's actually been able to, like, buy this. But, um, I have to say, I really do like it. Like, the palette isn't the only thing. They've got, like, lashes and, um, I don't know if that's the only thing. But I do want this palette. Eventually, I will get it. I hope it's not limited edition. But I know I'm not going to get it on the first or maybe even the second restock of this but um, I just hope that pure can get their website together so that people who really want to get this right now can get this and then hopefully like on the second or third restock I can get my hands on this okay so I saw this and I was shocked by how much I want it this is from the crayon case and this is the blush binder so they have three separate versions of this blush binder and they all look gorgeous just uh, maybe I'm just in a blush kick, but these look incredible. They've got three different binders or books, and they're very 
varied in their shades and I love that they they did something really light for more light skin tones they did something really deep for those deeper complexions and they all look like I really want all three of these like I don't need all three of these but I want them <laughs> they look gorgeous I really want the really light one and the the uh the medium one because I see like that deep red oh I see a purple Ooh, like mm, mm, this looks so pretty Oh, I want these. How much are they? They don't even come out until August. I This might be something I like put on my calendar to remind myself of because these look stunning. These look stunning. Oh. And I love the packaging. I think it's so cute and I love the swatches. These look whew, mm, These look amazing. I want all of these. <laughs> Though I have to say, I've not tried anything from the crayon case yet. So this will be my first product from them. So let me know if you've ever tried anything from them down below. So Winky Lux, which I will admit is a brand I've only tried like one or two times through back when I had, uh, what was the brand? Ooh subscription boxes i always put subscription boxes back when i had subscription boxes i tried this brand a couple of times it was never anything i really went out of my way to really try and they're coming out with a s'mores face palette which it's one palette so it's just like it's just like eh. and then a s'mores tri-colored balm which what the hell is that trying to be a tri-colored balm just to, yeah honestly this isn't something i'm like super interested in at all so just 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 um, so artist couture which is a brand that i think i mean i know them mainly for their highlighters i've tried a couple of their highlighters they had loose highlighters that were really pretty but i did get them in a subscription box so the shade that i got was too dark so i gave it to an old co-worker of mine but i've heard good things about the brand they're coming out with a new um caliente themed summer collection which is an eyeshadow palette a red lipstick and glosses the palette itself looks a little bit underwhelming to me i love the packaging the packaging looks stunning but the shades themselves they don't show them like super like straight on and i'm just like mm. and i've got plenty of red lipsticks i don't wear red lipsticks enough like i should wear more red lipsticks especially because i think they look really good on me bragging a little bit just a little bit but i don't wear them enough to buy another one um so yeah i'm not really interested in this collection but i have heard de decent things about the brand Oh, I thought my bra was showing, which at this point, like, would it really matter if my bra was showing? Like, it's, it's not like I'm in school anymore, right? American education system. So Beauty Creations, I think, yeah, Beauty Creations is coming out with a new setting spray that is watermelon scented. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who doesn't really like super food scented setting sprays because they just don't smell or sit the greatest. My favorite setting sprays are the Milani Make It Last, which is a very neutral scent. I love the Wet n Wild setting spray, specifically their Natural setting spray and the Rose setting spray. Those are just like my go-tos. Um, and then the MAC Fix Plus Rose as well. I just like roses. Maybe it's because I like more floral scents than fruity scents, but like to me, a setting spray that's really heavily fruity scented is just not my thing. So I, I yeah, I'm not interested in this quite literally at all. So Patrick Starr is coming out with his own beauty brand. I have to say, I have been just really distancing myself from anything related to these bigger beauty gurus because quite honestly, not all of them, I don't want to say all of them, but the majority of the bigger beauty gurus are just really toxic. But Patrick Starr seems like so genuine and I, I, I don't, I don't want to say that I'm immediately going to buy whatever they come out with, but I'm interested to see what happens because i know patrick star did a lot a lot of collabs with mac and i actually have one of the products the blush kind of duo from one of those collabs so i do want to see uh what's going to come out with this it's called one size beauty which is very cute so um, i'm going to be following them on instagram and we will see what they come out with uh, so I guess this is something that comes out every year for Kylie's birthday. I don't see any actual products yet, but based on the, the, the hint, I don't know if I'm going to be into it. The Kylie Cosmetics is going to come out with another birthday collection for 2020, and it looks like it's animal print, like cheetah print. Mm, I have to say, I've not really been interested in anything Kylie Cosmetics recently. I do have a few Holy Grails from her brand, like her concealer and her peach palette. 
amazing. Like I'm actually pretty shocked by how much I liked those products. But I, I still do, because of the price, I do, I might be a little bit more harsher, like on brands that cost more money, uh, especially when I know that there are cheaper options that give you the same exact result. So I'm a bit harsher on this. And like, for me, I'm not a huge fan of cheetah print or animal print. So I don't know, I will reserve a final judgment until we actually see what comes out. But just like, especially based on her previous like birthday collections, I never liked any of her birthday collections. So I don't think, I mean, just based on experience, I don't think I'm going to like this one. So ColourPop came out with a new foundation, which I have not had much luck with any of their foundations. This is the Pretty Fresh Foundation. So I have the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer, which only works for me because I am quarant not quarantined. I mean, technically I am. I'm still, I'm still acting as if I am quarantined. I leave my house once a week. I work from home full time, I do YouTube full time, and I stay at home. I leave once a week to run any errands that have to be done and to see my boyfriend. That's it. That's it. So where was I going with that? Okay, what I was going to say is that every other ColourPop foundation product that I've tried has been trash on my skin, especially for a full work day. And I define a full work day as at least 12 hours where I'm traveling and then traveling back. The only reason I actually decently like the um, ColourPop Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer is because I'm staying at home. Whenever I wore that back when I was going to my office and coming back and doing things, it looked trash. When I stay in my room and I sit in front of my air conditioning and I do nothing but sit at my desk doing this, it looks okay. And even then, it's just okay. You know? Yeah. I have had trash luck with the majority of ColourPop's base products. The only one that I like is their Pretty Fresh Concealer. That's the only product that I actually like outside of my house and inside my house, you know? So this, I just based on my past experience with ColourPop base products, I'm not going to try this. Probably, I mean, most likely not. I don't know. Have you guys tried these? What do you think? Do you actually like wear them outside if you still go outside? <laughs> Uh, okay, so a sidebar, speaking of how I was just talking about Kylie Cosmetics, I do hold her in the same group as makeup companies that should not be doing skincare. I, I have not tried any Kylie skin products, I will not be trying any Kylie skin products, and I don't recommend you try any Kylie skin products. Moving on. Okay, so I guess Kimchi Beauty is coming out with a new collab palette with Naomi Smalls. The palette itself kind of looks like a hodgepodge. I don't, uh, yeah. I mean, there's quite a few yellows and greens, which intrigue me a bit, but then seeing like this deep royal blue and that random green shimmer and then like a bunch of neutrals, I didn't like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this palette doesn't really know what it wants to be, especially because like all the promo pictures that I see are just using those green shadows. Like if you wanted to come out with a green palette, which I would recommend and promote, just come out with a green palette. I don't know why they had to throw in like that blue and all of these neutrals. Like if you want to come out with a like blue, green, yellow palette, come out with a blue, blue green, yellow palette. I don't know. I think the promotion pictures look gorgeous, but again, in the promotion pictures, they're using like just the green shadows. So, I don't know. So I'm not really interested because I know I have a bunch of green shadows in my collection, but I just, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I like green shadows so much. I just want to see more green palettes. Just like hit the mainstream and maybe not have them all like weed themed, just like just green palettes. I'm still holding my own out for like a, a naked green or a naked forest palette where it's like an, El or an urban decay palette that's like all browns and greens. Like how gorgeous would that be? I just want some deep rich greens from urban decay. Is that too much to ask for? Probably, but I want it. <laughs> so Pat McGrath is coming out with a mascara that is $30. Yeesh. I'm not going to, I mean, at least not anytime soon am I going to get this. Are the pictures gorgeous? Yes, of course they are. It's Pat McGrath. They're gorgeous. But I am very cheap <laughs> or discretionary when it comes to mascaras because I know a $4.99 mascara that is gorgeous. So I don't, I don't like spending more money on mascara, especially when you only have to keep it for three months. You can get a really good one for $5. Why would I pay $30 for a mascara? Exactly. 
So, this is different. I don't feel like I've seen a new Sigma release, at least a Sigma brush release in a bit. So Sigma is coming out with two new brushes. There is a, a new F53 Air Contour, which, what the hell? And a F74 Air Domed Buffer. Neither of these strike me as particularly unique or useful. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a need for either of these. I still love the F80, like the regular Kabuki. I use that. I use that today for my foundation. That's a really good brush, but I don't know. I feel like there's nothing that's really been reason from Sigma that's really gotten me to like think like, oh, I want that, you know? <sighs> yeah. Mm, so they're coming out with new shades of this really bad glitter. <laughs> oh, okay. I know I said for a while I was going to do a video, but oh, I haven't gotten around to that. I should. I should make, let me make a note right now to do that. So uh, I've been testing out quite a few of these glitters from e.l.f. And none of them are great. <laughs> so these are supposed to be like, like uh, liquid shimmers, like the Stila Glitter and Glows. I have found some great affordable options. Maybe mainly the Maybelline options, but these e.l.f. ones, I've tried three shades from the e.l.f. line and they're just trash. They don't last a day. Not even when I'm giving them like the full benefit of a doubt do they last a good full day. So I don't like these. So seeing them come out with more shades, I'm just like, but why? <laughs> you know? It's different. So, I mean, eventually, I keep saying it, eventually I'll come out with a video talking about how trash these are. <laughs> but they're, they're, they're just trash. I don't like them. They're just get the Maybelline. If you want a more affordable version of the Stila Glitter and Glows, just get the Maybellines. They're great. Ooh, so okay. Okay. I am just really drawn to brush brushes. <laughs> Blushes recently, apparently. Jouer Cosmetics is coming out with a new summer collection and their uh, face palette for deeper complexions is just calling my name with like that corally peachy blush and that deep shimmery blush and then like the bronzer contour and the high I want that palette. That looks pretty. Ooh, does that look pretty? I think it's called Cheeky Crush and the lighter version is called Sweet Cheeks. But the lighter version is really, really pink and I like the more coral orangey shades. So Oh, I would get Cheeky Crush. Oh, it looks pretty. Oh, and the packaging is stunning. I see that they have like lip glosses and like eyeshadow trios. I'm not interested in those at all, just being honest. I only like these blushes. So I might look into that blush trio, but the blush trios... Oh, no, not trios. I can't count the quads. Um, the face palettes are $34, which... Okay, they're a bit pricey, but they're cheaper than the eyeshadow tree. Oh, the eyeshadow... Okay, I lied. Let me get this straight. The face palettes are $34 each. The eyeshadow trios come in a set of four, and those four together are $42, which, okay, that makes more sense. That makes a lot more sense. I thought they were $42 each. I was gonna be like, what? What are you talking about? But no, it's $42 for all four. Uh, either way, I'm really only interested in these cheek palettes because how pretty is that darker shade palette? That's, there's dimension there. It's... Ooh, I want this. I don't know why. I'm just suddenly obsessed with blush. I don't, I don't know. Speaking of suddenly obsessed with blush, Charlotte Tilbury just came out with some new cream blushes. And what is wrong with me? I want to try them. I, I just, I think I just talked mad trash about Charlotte Tilbury in another video about how none of her products have really been worth it. And now I want to try this one. Monica, do you hear yourself talking? Do you? I don't know. Uh, I'm not gonna buy this anytime soon. I'll tell you that. But I'm intrigued. Uh, and I don't like that I'm intrigued. <laughs> okay, and then to finish out today's video, we're gonna talk about this. So, Ulta Beauty came out with a Harry Potter makeup collection, which, very timely, considering the kind of shit that JK Rowling's been pulling on Twitter recently. But just looking at these palettes, we've got palettes for each house, which they could have done so much with this. I, I mean, if anything, I might do a full video recreating, like making these palettes better because <laughs> they, I don't think they did justice to these palettes. Just saying. Um, out of all of these, I do think the Slytherin one looks the best, not just because I am a Slytherin myself, but because 
I see how did how dirty they did the rest of the houses with their palettes. Like the Hufflepuff palette has like one yellow, the Ravenclaw palette has like two blues, and the rest is like mauve. Gryffindor looks like a okay, but like Slytherin actually has like dimension. It's got a good mixture of like colors there, which I would actually use that palette, but I'm not gonna buy it. I'm not gonna buy anything from this collection. Let me go ahead and tell you why. Because J.K. Rowling has been such a uh, turf recently, uh, I've been um, reflecting on what I've been doing with Harry Potter. I mean, I'm doing an HP Project panel with my good friend Christina Chang, and she mentioned that due to this and whatever J.K. Rowling is doing, uh, she wasn't going to buy any more licensed merch, which I do fully believe this is licensed merch, which it should be because Ulta is coming out with it. So I'm not going to buy anything because it is fully licensed, which means that J.K. Rowling is getting royalties off of it. Uh, if I do buy anything, moving on, moving forward, f that is Harry Potter related, I want to buy from like fans, I want to shop on Etsy, I don't want to buy anything that's officially licensed because all of that money is going straight into the pockets of a privileged white woman who is against trans people. Yeah, I don't want to do that. So uh, let me know if you guys want to see a video where I make a palette like this for each actual house because I do think most houses were done dirty with this collection. So let me know if you guys actually want to see that because it took me a bit. It'll take me a little bit to actually put everything together, but I think that it could be a lot of fun. Also, if you're a Harry Potter fan, please don't buy this. Well, I I'm not going to tell you what to buy and not buy, but just I want to make you aware that if this is a licensed merch sale, which I do believe it is, uh, you are putting money in the pockets of J.K. Rowling. So just, I want to make sure if you are going to buy it, you're aware of that. So editing Monica here. Hello. Hi. I really wanted to talk about this, this product that like was put online and kind of released, not released, but it was like, uh, previewed <laughs> right after I finished filming. And it's this product from Becca. It is the No Pigment Collection. So there's a No Pigment Virtual Foundation, Virtual Foundation, and a No Pigment Highlighter for face and lip. What does that mean? You know, like I, I went to the website just to read the description of what it says, and this is what it says. Part of Becca's all new and innovative Zero Collection, the brand's No Pigment Virtual Foundation is free from pigment. Instead, util utilizing the brand's clear light blur technology to diffuse light around the face, blur imperfections, and smooth the appearance of skin. Okay. Silicone free and brimming with glycerin and hyaluronic acid to instantly hydrate parched pores. The Snow Pigment Virtual Foundation is a tall glass of cool water for skin that instantly cools skin on contact while controlling oil production that helps perfect skin with a transparent matte finish. The complexing, the complexion balancing formula helps you to embrace your natural complexion while also helping you achieve that comfortable dewy glass skin finish. Hmm. So it's supposed to work literally for all skin tones. I'm curious, pretty curious. Honestly, I have no idea if it's gonna work. I probably won't buy it right away looking, uh, I don't know what the actual price is gonna be. I saw a website where they had this listed, it looks like it's Cult Beauty. It was listed for 29 pounds. I don't know if it's gonna be that much when it comes out in, in American dollars, but it's, I don't know what I think about this. I'm curious, but I don't know if I want to buy it right away. I kind of just want to watch other people's videos on it first. But let me know what you guys think down below. So I have been talking for quite a long time now, and I think that's going to be it for this week's edition of The Bee Wow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below what you thought of all these products and what you thought of the video ideas I came up with during this video. And I did, yes, I do have a, a band-aid on my hand. I was doing all my chores today. Like I cleaned my entire like apartment, which is this attic area, and I like dusted and I cleaned and I washed on the windows. And then when I went to do my last thing, which was vacuuming, I snapped my fingernail in half like it actually snapped below the nail bed which is just like really painful but also I just did a really pretty manicure <laughs> and now I've got to chop all my nails down to nubs because of you anyway that's what I'm dealing with this this fine Sunday thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video bye